outside. And I'm Alex. And we're inside information. Today we'll be discussing Castaway, made by Robert Zemeckis in 2000. What made you watch the movie, though? What made me want to watch the movie was, okay, I was around seven, I believe. And my parents were watching the movie. And so I was interested in it, of course, since I'm a little kid. And I wanted to see something on TV at that moment as well. So I just joined them. I would say I missed a few of the opening scenes because I I didn't really start from the beginning. But then the second time around that I watched it, I did see the movie in its full glory, to say it like that. And I think it was really good. It was I, I, I 100% agree with you. I watched it uh, not that long ago, actually, a few weeks ago with my dad. He told me to watch it on a family night. And I was like, sure, now we can watch it, whatever. And then I watched it, I was like, well, that was actually a pretty good film. Thank you for showing me. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the characters? What do I think about the characters? Well, Chuck Nolan. Chuck Nolan. Let's say Chuck Nolan. Yeah. Okay. I think he was really well portrayed by Tom Hanks. The little details that Tom Hanks adds in his performance, the little the movements, the wording that he uses, really accurately make it seem that he is Chuck Nolan on Tom Hanks acting as Chuck Nolan. I don't know if that's the most clear way to put it, but that's how I think. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. And Chuck Nolan, I don't know if you remember, but uh, he was trying to show what an efficient way to deliver packages was. Mm -hmm. to, the, to the Russian in the beginning of the film. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, he does that all throughout the movie. Well, he doesn't because, you know, he got stranded on yeah. the island. But before that, but uh, he did that, and there's and there's also many subplots in the film. For instance, with Kelly, her character, she was his wife, but then he got stranded on the island for about four years, and then when he came back to civilization, uh, he saw her again. But Wait, let's make a correction there. I'm sorry, to everybody. My Indeed, she was not his wife. Okay? Right, she was his girlfriend. My so mistake. My yeah. mistake. But I believe she was going to propose to her on New Year's. On yeah. New Year's. So my mistake. But, um, yeah, and he came back many years later to find out that she's with another man. And that was a very sad moment in the film. But her character was, was very nice. She was, she, she, it seemed like she cared a lot about Chuck. And, um, I, I think her reaction when she saw him and when she heard that he was still alive was pretty definitive in that sense that she really did care and that she wasn't, she hadn't just forgotten all about it and moved on with her life. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then Tom Hanks, uh, you said his acting was great, right? Mm -hmm. But what specifically made it so great? Well, to put one to put one factor into this, I would say this wasn't so much Tom Hanks as the director had it, but more the director instructed. It was how he lost all that weight mm -hmm. in the, in the film. Oh, yeah, that was impressive. Was and also how he gained all the facial hair, and it really made it seem like he was living there. Mm -hmm. And also, to mention another character as well, well, not really a character, we'll talk about him in a second. I believe that um, the introducing Wilson part mm -hmm. was a really good director or director. Mm -hmm. The inanimate uh, object that was yeah. his own character in the film because he went crazy on the island and he started to believe Wilson was an actual uh, living being. And so it was his best friend for many years. And uh, that was very funny when I saw that. I was like, well, that guy is really crazy. And um, mentally, like, he, he was mentally scarred from that, right? So would you think it would have been better if he died in a plane crash? Well, I think it might have been. If I, if I want to be honest, I don't know what, it, what would have really happened if he had died in the plane crash. I don't think any of us would know. Probably... The whole movie wouldn't have happened. The whole movie wouldn't have happened. Too. Yeah, I mean, exactly. But, but I'm asking this for his like mental state. Like, mental like since, state. since he's back in society, he might not know how to act. His his, his girlfriend uh, left him. Everyone doesn't understand what he's been through. I mean, he might have FedEx might have paid him back for all those years he missed out. But still, I don't think it. I think maybe it's it's debatable. But him dying in the crash room maybe been a more favorable option for him. I like agree with you there. But as the ending scene proves, as the final scene proves, he did sort of reincarnate kind of, to society itself. Yeah, he did. Surprising he, fact, yeah. which was interesting. That was. But interesting. for the, I mean, but you know, that shouldn't really happen. I think. I think it takes someone many years and rehabilitation to yeah. get them back into society like a normal person again. Mm -hmm. um, do you think the packages that he got from the plane crash affected his survival? Like, do you think it made him survive as long as he did? 
In my opinion, it was more of a goal. Of his. Since he was uh, famous, and here we, go, we discussed this earlier on, I think it was sort of a motive for him to keep on going, mm -hmm. to not give up on what he was doing because he wanted to give the packages back. That's true. He didn't want to just leave them there and give up on everything. It was, I think, an important part in how he stayed alive because mm -hmm. that was his goal. Yeah, he also, wanted to deliver that one package, yes. Mm -hmm. But also, the packages had uh, Wilson, the ball, uh, the, the roller skates, and the uh, ice skates, my bad, uh, which was used as like a hatchet later on in the film and, yeah. and the VHS tapes that he used for... Um, like uh, taping things, but not actually taping things, but it was like a rope mm -hmm. to tie things together. And yeah, he gained a lot of things and the flashlight uh, that was helping for him Ooh, too. Now that you mentioned him, I think I want to talk about him. Wilson. Mm -hmm. What did you think about Wilson? Wilson, I mean, he's a ball. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I think uh, uh, he played a major role in uh, Chuck Nolan's survival because if it wasn't for Wilson, he wouldn't have a friend. And Kelly wouldn't have pushed them on much longer because in the movie, he, he, one of the main reasons he pushed them was because of Kelly. And another one is because of Wilson because he was there for him, at least mentally. And so then if he would have if he would have not been there, he would have ended it a lot sooner because he even made a suicide machine in the film with, uh, with rope. And he tied it into a noose, and he was supposed to, he was gonna kill himself with it, but it, it didn't work out. And so then I think he, those two characters, specifically Wilson, will push them on forward. I think Wilson was a really great um, action by the director. How he was able to make us feel sentiment for him, mm -hmm. even though he wasn't an object, like a real person of any kind. He was inanimate. He was a ball. You said it yourself. Yes. But I know that I felt really sad when Wilson drifted away or died to put it into oh, yes. Yeah, he drifted away. I was so sad in the film. I almost cried for a ball. Mm -hmm. That takes impressive film work because um, making an animate object, its own character and making people feel bad about it, that's like a whole other level of you know, emotion. So that was really impressive on the filmmaker's part. And um, back on to Kelly, uh, she was with someone else at the end of the film, at like towards the end of the film. When you saw that, what did you think? Did you think she was like scum or did you think like she that was right of her to do or what do you think? What I saw, I thought it was actually right of her to do because yeah. eventually she'd have to move on. She couldn't stay stuck to Chuck Nolan the entire time. Yeah. Even though he in her mind, he was already deceased. Mm -hmm. So I think it was a good decision of hers to move on, but that does raise the question. Do you think they should have ended up together? Um, honestly, no, because she had a family. I don't think, I think it would have been morally incorrect of her. Um, they had, um, Chuck Nolan did the right thing when uh, him leaving her and going on his own path to deliver the package, and just going on his own way. I think that was the right choice. Um, I do too, but I sub in some small way. I always thought they should have ended up together. together. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, after four years, I mean, personally, I would. I think I would have waited that long. Well, actually, he was he was set to die in the crash, so I understand. But I don't know. I don't know. It's just it's just me. Do you think he would have survived? Like you? I uh, me. Well, I don't know if I would survive in the first day. I think I might have actually already died in the plane crash. In the plane crash. Yeah. No, but after the plane crash, they survived. All that, you have all the packages, every single thing he was equipped with. Do you think he would have survived? No, I don't think I have that type of initiative or any type of sense of like survival instincts. In, in survival instincts in me. What about you, Tony? Um, no, for two main reasons. One, I have contact lenses, so I'd be blind after the first two weeks. Yeah. And two, I'm allergic to fish, Ooh. and that was his only. That was like his main food source. So mm -hmm. uh, unless I could survive off coconuts for four years, um, I'm I'm dead. I'm as good as dead. Um, what aspects of the film would you say made it so great? Well, I already mentioned it previously, but how Tom Hanks transformed during his time on the island. Mm -hmm. How he went from. Uh, let's say normal human into a surprisingly thin and hairy person. Yeah, and but a survival expert. He he was um he, he was an excellent mark marksman, as you can see when he threw the spear at the fish. Um he was um 
a great survivalist. He knew how to make fire. He, he knew he even got the sun to tell him what month of the year it was in the cave, which was very impressive. I don't, I don't think I would have ever come up with that. Yeah. He he did really good for himself, considering and when he cut himself, that should have gotten infected. I don't know how he didn't die from that. But actually, he did uh, take care of his wounds, I think, correctly. So that's that's why. So he was. I think he already knew what to do before he had to do it, but he just got even better as time went on, which is very impressive. Oh, one part that I wanted to mention, too, was when Chuck was in the plane and he took off his shoes mm -hmm. while he was in the plane. Do you yeah. think that was an important part there? I mean, it would have been if uh, he didn't find the pilot, uh, the pilot's dead body in the beach, because then he would cut himself, which is what was happening at the start of the film. But then he was able to find that, and uh, that that probably saved his feet a lot of pain. Yeah, I was. I had this whole gut wrenching feeling when I saw him take off his shoes, and then when he eventually crashed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but a uh, good thing he was able to find his body and bury and give him a, pro a proper burial. The the pilot. Um, would you consider this Robert Zemeckis' best work? I would actually. I think it's. One of the best cinematography works as well. Yeah, yeah, really good directing, but to me, Back to the Future is his best work. But that's also a close. Uh, he's up there. He's in the, that that movie yeah. in the top five, in in my opinion. And uh, many many people praise Tom Hanks for this uh, role as well as in Forrest Gump, but also in this role. Mm -hmm. Would you say it's he was worthy of praise? I do think he's worthy of praise. Well, Tom Hanks himself is a really good actor. I think he does exceptionally well in every role that he's put in. Yeah, at least exceptionally. But in this role, he was, he was, he was, he was at, in, in, in his A game, you know, he, he really brought, he really brought his um, acting to a whole new level. Um, in your opinion, should they remake this movie? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't see why they want to remake the movie. I don't know how it would exactly fit into a uh, director's whole idea of what he wanted to do because it's already, it's still an iconic movie. It's made only 22 years ago. Yeah. And so... Relatively recent. Relatively considering recent. Considering how long movies have been around. So, but still old, in my opinion. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, um, overall, what would you rate this film out of 1 to 10? I would give it a solid 8.5. No, I'd give it a, an 8. An 8? An 8. It's kind of long but for me, but yeah. I, I think it has to be that long. But these other subplots and stuff weren't like... The reason it's not a 10 is because of the, the other subplots weren't like, you know, too that weren't too degrees. immersive for me, you know? But um, other than that, yeah, I think it's a really well-made film. Every, I recommend it. You should watch it whenever you have for uh, three hours to spare. Yeah. And uh, thank you for tuning into Inside Information. And uh, we'll see you next week with another surprise film. Yeah. See you later. Bye. Bye.